Cousin Margaret. Edith. How was your walk? It was lovely. It's a very pretty gown. And a matching bonnet. Yes. I had specially made. Oh. I also had my dress made. By Aunt Elizabeth. Margie. We must remember, whoever he may choose, we shall always remain the very best of friends. Oh, yes, of course, Edith. Blood is thicker than water. We shall love and support each other, no matter what. No matter what. Even if there is a slight disadvantage for you, cousin, as I am younger. Of course you are. And of course, I do have an extensive amount of experience in keeping house and raising children with all my dear little siblings. Yes, quite. While you were raising your many brothers and sisters, I dedicated my time to studying the great poets and literary figures of our day. I hear this is what a man appreciates in a wife. Margaret, very important to watch one's intake if one is to capture a husband. Ladies are expecting you, sir. I'll let you. Good luck, Maggie. And you, Edith? Ladies, I present you Mr. Barry. Mr. Barry, present you Miss Edith Perry Ashworth and Miss Margaret Bloxham. Oh, ladies. So lovely to make your acquaintance this fine morning. Thank you for receiving me. Mr. Barry? Yes. So good of you to come. My cousin and I have heard much about you from my Aunt Elizabeth. <laughs> and yet one can never know quite enough in advance. <laughs> it's quite. And I understand that both of you are of a eligible age and status for matrimony. No. I am not. <laughs> There's no need for feminine modesty on my account, Miss Ashworth. <laughs> it is quite evident that you are of a Eligible age. Mr. Barry, would you care to sit? Yes. Mama tells us you're a pupil of the seminary. Yes, I'm studying to be a vicar. They've been keeping me at the seminary longer than most. I've sat for my Greek exam three times. <laughs> Obviously, the extent of my intellect is being tested, and the clergy are preparing me for a very important placement. <sighs> but upon graduation, once fully ordained and assigned my own parish, I will require a wife to assist me with my duties and to raise our children, of course. Mr. Barry, <laughs> would you care for a sandwich? Yes, I am rather pinch. Hmm. Hmm. As you know, Mr. Barry, Mother has asked you to come to our home to become acquainted with my cousin and I. I've been out for a little time now. And I must confess, although marriage was something I considered, with my aged mother suffering rheumatism and gout, 
It would be of greater charity for me to forsake my own happiness and seek that for her, caring for her in the years ahead and remaining a spinster. After all, I am not young anymore. But my cousin here is a youthful example of womanhood. She would make a loving, patient, and sturdy wife, especially for a man of your fine breeding. You are a most Christian and charitable woman, Miss Bloxham. And any man would be honored to have called you his wife. In fact, in this instance, how could a man refuse such a woman the right to ask her mother to live with her? It would be wrong to do otherwise. You are a little on the fuller and mature side. However, I'm sure you live to a reasonable age. And when you are more wrinkled, I will not scorn you. Rather, I will continue to honor you and your ailments and frailty <laughs> till death do us part. <laughs> I cannot think of a more suitable wife than my dear cousin here. Such selflessness. And you know, Miss Bloxham has spent her many free hours studying the great poets and literary figures of her day. Something she's quite proud of. Excellent in conversation. You speak highly of your cousin. An attribute I find very attractive in a lady. You are the most monstrous woman. <laughs> oh dear, it can be considered somewhat unusual for a man to have a wife so much taller than himself. However, I care not for such vanity. I will not be swayed by the popular thoughts of society. I will wear a slight heel. And you will remain seated while I stand to give the impression of subservience. And any appeal you lose through your height, you will certainly make up for on your youth and uh, your ability to bear me many children. <laughs> Sir, such thoughts are premature indeed. And I dare say it is precisely because I am tall that it will be difficult to bear children. And having grown so tall has left me with no maternal instinct whatsoever. Oh, Edith, darling, don't be so hard on yourself. Why, Mr. Barry, Edith was just saying how her many brothers and sisters gave her so much valuable experience rearing children. Mm. Oh. Come, come, Miss Ashworth. I'm quite certain that once your sweet eyes fall upon your firstborn son, cradled across your... bosom, the mother in instinct will take over and all will be well. Oh, dear. Mr. Barry, I believe it is my cousin Margaret who's most suitable to be a vicar's wife. The way she reads and bakes and bakes. I've never seen a woman care for children the way Edith does. She holds them in the palm of her hand and they obey her. Oh, but what are children when a man can have his wife read to him on long journeys to the country and at church gatherings? It is a blessing from heaven when one comes from a large family. So much experience in raising children. So much love. Yes, church gatherings where Margaret would recite poetry to the congregation. And Margaret knows so much poetry, there shall never be any time for dullness. I just know we just will fit right into the family role. And the parishioners will be so proud. Goodness, one can only imagine. And the benefits! As she bakes like no one I know. Her family is well known for baking potatoes and such things. Mm, delicious! Oh. <clears throat> well, ladies, I have reached my decision. I have decided that the one who shall be joining me in matrimony shall be neither of you. What? What? I have decided upon reflection that neither of you are suitable as my wife. Miss Ashworth, you are much too tall. <laughs> and Miss Bloxham, far too aged. And both of you speak more in the company of a man than a woman should. Therefore, I shall seek a suitable spouse elsewhere. Thank you and good day. Well... 
was a little unexpected. Yes, quite. I must say, I didn't think I had so many wrinkles. You don't, my dear. You don't. You are very handsome, cousin. And you, my dear, are not too tall. <laughs> Rather, he is too short. Yes, quite. It is he who is unsuitable. That was a close call indeed, Edith. Yes, indeed. There are plenty more suitors for the likes of us, dear cousin. <laughs> yes, indeed. You know, cousin, I really would like to read more poetry. But where does one start? Well, I think I would start with William Wordsworth. I wandered lonely as a cloud. Now, this is a lovely poem. <laughs> 